Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the WD Black Drive for Xbox One. This is a 12 terabyte external USB hard drive that also works with the PC and we're going to be taking a look at using it with both an Xbox and a PC a little bit later in this review. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. I should also mention that WD is a past sponsor here on the channel, but they are not sponsoring this video. So let's get into it now and see what this drive is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. The price point on this one will rival that of your console. $299 for the 12 terabyte version, $199 for the 8 terabyte version. You could probably assemble your own for less money, but there's a reason why these things exist in the marketplace. They are licensed by Microsoft to work with the console, and when consumers are out shopping for their kids' Xbox components, they know it's going to work and it's an out-of-the-box solution. Not everybody wants to build something and you're going to pay a little bit more because of that. But I was looking around at hard drive prices and to find a comparable 7200 RPM 12 terabyte drive and an enclosure to drive it at the speed this one runs at uh, will likely be maybe $50 to $75 less at least at the time that I'm recording this video, you might find some better deals out there, but you're not gonna pay all that much more here for the completed package. Now, at the time I'm recording this video, there is a three month coupon for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate in the box. Uh, this is a service on PC and Xbox that allows you to download well over 150 games, I think at this point, including all of the new Microsoft titles, and you can play those on your Xbox console or on your PC. And that'll run about $45 if you were paying for that three months. So there is some cost mitigation here uh, built in with that coupon. Now you'll note on the back of this here that in addition to the USB connector for hooking it up to your console or PC, that there are two additional USB connectors here. Uh, this will not work as a USB hub, but it will charge devices off of these two USB ports here. So if you are running out of free ports on your Xbox, uh, you can at least still charge your controllers through the hard drive's power supply. So that might be useful to you there. I would have loved to have seen this had a USB hub functionality, especially for PC usage, but unfortunately, uh, those ports are charging only. Uh, 7200 RPM on this, as I mentioned, which is a pretty decent speed. I was finding, as you'll see in a few minutes, that the games will load up off of this drive faster uh, than they do on my internal Xbox One hard drive, so that was good. Uh, the case here feels pretty solid. This little uh, stand here will detach. It snaps on and holds itself on there pretty securely. It looks like a metal case, but it isn't. It's all plastic, um, so you'll probably want to be careful about picking it up uh, and moving it around to different places. You certainly want to make sure that your Xbox is off and the hard drive has spun down before you pick it up. Uh, there's a lot of data on this little hard drive here, and that's something that you definitely want to be careful about. Uh, so keep that in mind. But otherwise, a pretty nice looking device here. And now what we're going to do uh, is attach it up to our Xbox console first so you can see exactly what the process is of getting this thing to work and how to move games back and forth. And then we'll take a look at its performance on the PC. So let me get my Xbox out here and hook it all up. All right, so we've got my OG Xbox hooked up here along with the external hard drive attached to it via USB. I chose one of the USB ports in the back, but you can also do the one on the side here. Now what'll happen here when you connect everything is you should be prompted to either format the drive or leave it as a media drive. Now if you decide to format it, then you can install games and apps. If you don't, you can only use it to store video and audio files and that sort of thing. Uh, so once you decide to format, you're going to give it a name. You can decide whether or not to install all new things to the external drive or leave things as is, and then you format, and that is pretty much it. The drive will then be available to you. Now, if you happen to have missed the opportunity to set this up or selected the wrong option, you can go back in and change your mind. Uh, you hit the Xbox icon there on the top of the controller. Uh, you hit the right shoulder button here to go over to settings, and then... Uh, what you do is go over to system and then storage and what you'll do here let me pull up a closer view for you uh, is select your 12 terabyte drive here uh, and format it for games this way so i'm just going to select the option there and hit the a button 
and we're going to say format for games and apps and will be brought to the same screen that we had there before. Uh, so I'm going to format the storage device here. We'll give it a name again and that will uh, get everything up and running and we'll install new things here as well. And then it just wants to make sure that you really want to do it and then you are good to go. And once that formatting is done, uh, we should see the drive here show up next to our internal storage. Now you'll note though that we only have about 11 terabytes available. Uh, this is all how Microsoft interprets storage versus WD and how they uh, make that calculation. So although it's 12 terabytes in theory, uh, the workable usable storage here is actually 10.9 for your apps and games. Now, a little earlier, I tested the speed between the external drive here and the internal one on my Xbox. I booted up Crackdown 3, first on the internal drive, which took about 21 seconds to get to the title screen. On the external drive here, it did it in 15 seconds. And that's because the external hard drive is actually faster than the internal one, at least on my particular Xbox console. Uh, depending on what hard drives they're loading into the consoles these days will vary that timing a little bit. But I do think the 7200 RPM on here is likely faster than most of the shipping internal hard drives that you'll get. Uh, so in many cases, you'll see things speeding up for you, especially when it comes to loading games. So not only can you store a lot of games, you can get them running a lot quicker. And if you've got a bunch of stuff on the internal drive, you can very easily transfer things over. Uh, so we're still in that system storage menu from before. And if I go over to my internal drive here and go to transfer, I can do a bulk transfer of some of the games that are stored on this hard drive. I'm not going to do any of the big ones right now just for time's sake here, but I've got a gigabyte selected. I'm just going to go to move and we can then uh, send these over to the external drive here and those will copy over pretty quickly given the fact that we're only transferring about a gigabyte in total here. Now a little bit earlier I moved Crackdown 3 off of the internal drive to the external drive. That took about three and a half minutes for that 12 gigabyte game so not all that bad. You'll likely be waiting around a little bit as you initially load everything onto the drive if you are doing those transfers but overall load times should be a lot faster once they're on that drive. Now I found noise overall on the drive to be pretty quiet even when I have it hooked up to the PC and these noisy Xboxes are shut down. Uh, there is a cooling fan on the drive. Uh, you'll also hear the drive rotating along with its drive head moving back and forth. But for a spinning hard drive, it was actually pretty quiet, all things considered. So uh, altogether, I don't think it's going to be adding much noise to your game setup, especially if you are using an Xbox or if you've got a particularly noisy PC. So all in, not an offensive noise-making device. Uh, and speaking of PCs, let's take a look now at some performance benchmarks we got when I hooked it up to my PC a little bit earlier. So if we take a look at the Crystal Disk Mark test, you can see that we've got really good sequential read and write speeds on this drive, about 250 megabytes per second in both directions. That is very good for a USB spinning hard drive, no complaints there. And that means when you're transferring games back and forth, they'll move over pretty quickly, at least for uh, what a mechanical drive can do for you. So that was a good thing to see. Now, if we jump back into that test, though, and look at some of the random reads and writes that uh, we did on this drive, it doesn't score nearly as well uh, in those areas. But I do think this drive is going to be a lot faster than the internal drive that you're probably working with at the moment. So altogether, uh, you will notice a speed improvement. But if you want super fast loading times, then a solid state drive is still the better way to go but you won't get this kind of capacity for 300 bucks with a solid state drive. 12 terabyte solid state drives, I don't even think exist at the moment, at least for consumers. Uh, so really the trade-off here between mechanical and flash memory is that mechanical is less expensive and has a lot more capacity. It's just not going to be as fast as the more expensive solid state drives will get you there. But altogether for an external spinning hard drive, this seems to work pretty well. I had no issues with it on my PC once I formatted the drive. I'm probably going to use this actually as a backup drive for my PC actually. So all in, it's a pretty good solid product here from WD and I think it will work well both for your gaming needs but also general PC needs as well. And it looks pretty cool too. So that is gonna do it for the WD Black Drive for the Xbox One. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and until next time, this is Lon Seidman, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters. 
including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast. Chris Allegretta. Tom Albrecht. Brian Parker. And Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.